Hi everyone, I'm Michelle. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a wonderful day so far. So this video is going to be, it's going to start off a little bit like a vlog where I'm going to be preparing some things for my market that was upcoming and I start off with crochet but I'm going to go into a couple other crafts that I do uh, for my markets as well though of course my main focus is always crochet plushies for markets but I'm going to go a little bit into that. So when I'm recording this right now, the market has already passed, but I'm going to save all that information for the end of the video. I just wanted to make a little intro for the video since I, of course, forgot to do that again. So yeah, I just, I hope you enjoy and um, thank you so much for watching. These are all the plushies, the new plushies that I want to take this time around to my market. So, I have to price everything. There's some really cute ones. A lot of new things. Um, I'm really excited. I am going to start bringing some Christmas ones. So, I have a snowman there. Another snowman here. A, it's like a Santa turtle. I'm going to give these one last shot because of Thanksgiving. But other than that, oh, and a ghost too. Just because he's cute, I thought I would put him in. But there's some really adorable amigurumis here. I'm hoping they find homes. So I'm going to spend quite a while putting price tags on them all. Oh, I'm also taking a nativity set back there. There is Mary holding baby Jesus and Joseph. So we'll see if it's too early for Christmas. Personally, for me, it's not. So I'm going to be taking some Christmas items. So everything has been priced. I have, well, I'm halfway priced anyways. I just cut out the price tags and now I have to go back, cut out the string that I used to tie it and then attach it all. So we're, I guess, halfway, maybe close to a quarter, closer to a quarter because I still have to cut out the string. I totally forgot about that, but Thankfully, I have the prices, so the harder part is done, which is me trying to decide how much to price everything. But we're getting work done, so that's good. Look how adorable these are. Oh my goodness, these pens are so, so cute. So I made a bunch of these and I just love the way they're decorated. I put tassels on most of them and now I just have to package them up. They're just super cute. There's like R2-D2, Princess Leia. There's so many different characters. So what I'm gonna do right now is package them up. I have the different bags that I'm going to use and then I make sure that I put an ink refill for the pens too. So it's going to take me some time, but it shouldn't be too long. I think the hardest part, the most time consuming, I should say, the most time consuming part is done. So now I just got to package them up and get them ready for the market.
So I was really excited because I had made a bunch of new cat toys and the problem was they didn't have the sticker, the label on them that says cat toys made using organic catnip. And not only is it good for people to know that it does have organic catnip in it but they just look so much more professional with the stickers on so i knew it was time to get to work i pulled out my ipad and of course my munbin printer which i absolutely love and i decided that i needed to make some more stickers for each cat toy I think I only had something like 8 cat toys made, but I went ahead and printed 12 stickers so I have some backup just in case if I randomly decide to make some more cat toys. I already have a few stickers um, that are just ready to go. So I had already put the toys in the bags and I tried to put the sticker on over the bags but it was a little difficult and it kept creasing so I decided to go ahead and take the toys out, put the stickers on, and then put the toys back in. And oh my goodness, they look so much more professional. I do want to ask your opinion though. For two of these toys, I put the stickers at the bottom and for the rest of them I did like I always have, I put the stickers at the top. So I am curious which style do you like better? Which sticker placement do you think looks best? It's hard either way. It covers up a little bit of the toy, but I am curious. I'd love to know what you guys think. I absolutely love my Munbin printer and I will have the link in the description box of where you can pick one up as well. It's market day, so excited. I just have this little bag and then everything else is packed up in the car. So I was really excited because the sun is out. That's great. Um, yeah, let's get going. Okay, so it was a really, really fun market. It was chilly. It was very chilly again. And I can tell as of like now, probably as of like two weeks ago, the weather has officially changed. It is, I have a window right here. It is gloomy outside. So I have the high uh, and the low for weather wise on Saturday. And it was, uh, Oh my goodness, a high 70 and a low of 44. Uh, it was really, really chilly. It did not get 
warm till like 15 minutes before the market was ending or when it was ending and part of me only feels that way I think because I was doing like heavy lifting um putting away the canopy and getting all my um crafts <laughs> in you know piling it to the car bringing it to the car it's a lot of work physically so I think that's why I got warm but honestly it was a very cool day and it's just gonna be cooler <laughs> so i don't know uh future markets but i i have for sure i have one scheduled and it's an indoor market so that's gonna be coming up in a couple weeks it's in december um i will be doing that one for sure and then the farmers markets i'm not sure anymore as of this point how many more i'll be doing it's very much weather dependent and if it's gonna rain and all that fun stuff so yeah as of right now this may be the last farmer's market for a while maybe not i will keep you guys updated but uh, i have some fun things written down some sales and i thought it'd be uh, good to talk about some of those things so quickly before i get into the sales in the videos you may have saw i was showing you guys a what are they called a dog that I made, oh, a loaf dog that I made, um, someone, I'm assuming it was a kid, honestly, I, I don't know, uh, there was some times where there was a couple bigger groups, like a four or five people, so I couldn't see the whole table and what was going on in the booth, but when I was putting my plushies, like, in order after a group have had left the booth uh i noticed that this dog this poor thing had his tail really really tugged on so i don't know if i'm just gonna uh, take a new tail when i go because i don't know where he is in my bags but either i'm gonna make him a completely new tail or try to secure that one but to be honest i'm pretty sure i'm just gonna make him a new tail um yeah, I was disappointed to see that. That's never really happened to me before where someone like abuses of a plushie. I I'm pretty sure they were trying to pull at the tail. Maybe it was a little kid, hopefully someone that didn't know any better. But it's sad to see people um, not being kind <laughs> to things that are handmade. We put a lot of work into it and thankfully it was just a tail where I can like snip it off and sew a new one back on but if it was like an arm or something uh, on a different plushie if it was like an arm or something that took a long time or maybe I don't even have the color anymore that would really suck so thankfully it was something semi-minor that I could fix up but either way it is kind of sucky um yeah <laughs> that was an interesting thing that happened you may have also seen the tortoise someone brought in um a tortoise and they were like walking it in the market i kind of felt bad though because it would get very very crowded around that tortoise and he just kind of wanted to do his own thing but the owners were very much making him go in a certain direction so um yeah it was cute it was uh very cool to see that so <laughs> let's talk a little bit more about sales my very very first sale of the day I did not, I don't think I have this photographed because I had finished setting up and I had people at the booth, um, which happens sometimes. A lot of times in the morning though, there's not a lot of sales. Like people will look, but I try to wait until the booth is empty to do pictures and videos of um, my booth. I don't really want to make people feel uncomfortable. So I try to wait for that and I had to wait a little bit and the, the person that was in there actually bought something which is great but that means I don't have it photographed. So I'm pretty sure I did take pictures of this item a long time ago when I originally made it and um, yeah the first thing that sold was a big pink penguin. Um, I, I'm pretty sure actually it is in the clips where I was showing you guys all the new things that I was taking to this market so the funny thing about that penguin I took him or her to a market a while ago someone had messaged me on Instagram that they wanted to purchase it so I saved it aside for them 
um, they were like, but I don't get paid until a certain day. Is it possible for you to hold it for me? It was like a month out. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'll save it. I probably shouldn't have done that. And um, they never ended up buying it. <laughs> this is like, this was over the summer. So maybe like five months ago. And yeah, I thought, you know what? It's time to take that penguin to a market because obviously that person doesn't want it. They lost interest. So let's see if we can find it a home. It, it was a big amigurumi. It was taking up space here. So I was so excited for that to have been the first sale, especially again, because it was so cold. I wasn't really sure how it was going to go, um, how the sales were going to be, because when it's cold, there usually aren't as many customers as when it's like a nice day weather wise. So I was really excited to see that that penguin found a new home and the little girl was so, so happy with it. Um, so yeah, that was the first sale. It was a very, very lucky sale for me. I had a capybara sold. But I don't know if it was, it was probably the sitting up style. I do a couple different styles of capybaras. So I have a capybara written down. I sold a couple chickens, maple chickens. I always make them um, when I'm bored. <laughs> and I did sell a couple this uh, market. I sold a couple Perry the Platypus as well. And those were $10 each. Um, there is a little bit of sewing to those small Perrys because you have to sew on the bill and the tails. So just a little bit of sewing on those. I sold a loaf cat. Which loaf cat was it? Uh, oh, it was a red one. <laughs> it was a red one that had glitter eyes. Also one that I'm not sure if I photographed it, but I did for sure in a previous market. So even if I put a picture of an older um, market, but that cat, <laughs> I'll put that in. But it was really cute. I charged $25 for my larger loaf cats that I make with blanket yarn. And they're, they're pretty big size. So that one found a home, which I was really excited about. Because I had made three loaf cats in that red color. And they were different styles. Like some of them had white. Or one of them had white. One of them was all red. I think this one had a white like muzzle. So... Um, it was the glitter eyes though. They were so, so cute. Green glitter eyes. Which reminds me, I need to place an order for more safety eyes. But glitter ones. Um, I sold a um, Timothy the T-Rex. So that was very exciting as well as a, a velvet opossum. And I showed you guys I had made like a dozen <laughs> velvet opossums. But I think I only took two to the market. I don't, if I make a dozen, I don't usually take the dozen because they're not going to sell. I'll take like three or four. But this case, I only took two since I do have acrylic opossums as well. And the velvet ones, I think I put them a dollar or two higher than the acrylic yarn ones. But I have options for people just in case if they might think the velvet one is maybe a little bit too expensive. I think... Oh my goodness, I'm horrible at remembering my prices, <laughs> to be honest. But I'm pretty sure my acrylic opossums are somewhere between like 12 and... I think they're around 12-ish. I, I could be wrong, but <laughs> that sounds right to me. Maybe 12 to 14, depending on the size. And the velvet, I think I did 16. Um... So again, I'm looking at my sales here, seeing like what things are fun <laughs> that I could add. I finally sold a Pokeball Squirtle that I made. This is the third time that this happens where I kind of had given up on this plushie and I tucked it in <laughs> into the very back of my shelf, my black cubes that I use. I had tucked it in there because I didn't think it was going to sell. Someone spotted it and I guess 
they really liked it so they picked it up and um it found a home <laughs> I, that had happened previously we're on a roll for the ones that i don't believe in and i tuck in there i don't know if it's a magic little corner in the in the cubes because it's always that same corner but the first time it was a chick with an eggshell and then the second the following week it was a monster and then this time it was that squirtle so i thought that was funny uh, the jumbo jellyfish that i hung on the corner of the tent the canopy sold this was barely my second time taking it to a market and it found a home that's so exciting i do want to make another one i just don't know what colors to use i do use blanket yarn i have a lot of blues and teals but i don't know if i want to make the same jellyfish combination in the colors again part of me wants to do maybe pink but i feel like if i do pink it's very much for girls whereas personally me like my favorite color is baby blue i know boys can like pink too but it just feels like it's more of a girl toy whereas the teal the blues can go either way so i don't know maybe that's just me um anything else on here i sold a spider <laughs> i debated taking the spider because i was like oh halloween's over but it doesn't necessarily have to be halloween it's just a spider and i did have it at 12 dollars, which is not bad priced <laughs> it did take a lot of work i know i should have charged more for it but i was okay letting it go for 12 that's the price that i put on it and if i'm not mistaken i took this one to the shop the consignment shop that i sell at and it didn't sell before halloween so i brought it back home and took it to this market and it sold for 12 dollars. so that was fun it was a little boy that bought it he was very very excited i think because he really liked the colors it was like a black gray and blue variegated yarn so it made a really cool spider um is that let's see the rest are like little things like little frogs and things from like my ten dollar basket which i don't really take pictures of since my basket is full of $10 amigurumis and I literally just throw them in there. There's whales in there and frogs and chicks and all sorts of um, things. People love digging in that basket. But um, yeah, it was a great market. I had a lot of fun. My sister was there to help me, which I have to get her in these videos one day. Um, she's so much help. Honestly, I don't know how people do markets by themselves, especially when it comes to the loading and the um, unloading. It's a lot of work and setting up too. She helps me with so many things. Um, yeah, that way I'm able to like go and see the market as well versus of course, if I would go by myself, I'd be stuck in the stall in the booth so it's so nice having someone and i'm super super thankful for her um i know people do markets by themselves and i am in awe i probably will have to one day um do them by myself but i am so so grateful i definitely know that it's a blessing <laughs> i'm not taking it for granted at all that i have someone um yeah, usually it's either my mom or my sister that comes with me and I make sure that they get lunch and coffee and flowers. There's a there's an awesome flower vendor at the markets that we always love to support. We have our favorite coffee place. Um, the food changes because vendors change. Sometimes some people show up and sometimes others do. So it's always a really, really fun time and it feels like bonding time as well since you know we all work and we're so busy but for those five hours we're stuck together <laughs> so yeah thank you so much for joining me that was my little market recap in some of it all it was a very cold day i'm so glad i took a jacket and a sweater under that jacket and i think i was wearing a shirt like this like a sweater shirt so I had this 
not this specific one, but I have a lot of shirts in this style. So I had one of these, a sweater on top, and a jacket on top of that. And I'm pretty sure I did not take any layers off. It was chilly, but people were out there anyways. I'm so ready for the December market, although it could take its time getting here. It could take its sweet time because I love Christmas time. It's already Christmas time for me. <laughs> the house is all decorated. Um, so yeah, it could take its time getting here, but I'm excited for it. Um, I haven't done a different type of market in a long time. I've just been doing the farmer's market. So that's what I'm really excited to see different vendors and do some Christmas shopping and socialize with, of course, some different vendors and um, customers as well. Because I do get repeat customers at the farmer's market, which is great. Uh, it warms my heart. I love it so much, but I'm excited to uh, go to a new area, new venue. So that'll be very exciting. I think that is going to be the next market video that I do. And then after that, it's possible there may be one before Christmas, but not for certain. If not, it's going to be the December market. And then I probably don't plan to do one until February. God willing, if it doesn't rain, because it tends to rain here a bit around February. So, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry again for the lack of vlogging footage during the market. At these farmer's markets, the, the booths are one next to the other. There's no space in between. So sometimes it is kind of awkward to uh, record footage of, you know, you talking to yourself. So that's why I didn't do that and it was a, a pretty busy market too a lot of people walking around and looking and great conversation so yeah thank you so much for joining me i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you guys next time bye